Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today I'm going to be taking you through a very cool tip here inside of Blender so that we can get amazing looking renders. So let's go. Now, while we're talking about these, I also have a lot of uh, interesting news. Last week, we had our first week with this new brand. Thank you, everyone, for all of the support. And this week, we'll have more shorts, more videos, more interaction on our Discord channel, another live stream. And this week, we're intending, if everything goes right, we're intending to release our first premium course. So if you want to stay tuned and get the first news about the new course, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button so that you can get all of the notifications. So uh, today, I want to talk about a very cool thing that we can do instead of blender and also inside of my it's it, this is applies to every single software which is add a little bit of um you know oomph to the whole thing we're going to be talking about lights we're going to be talking about a depth of field and we're going to be talking about vignette so yeah let's go the first thing is here the area lights so i added one area light here on the right as you can see or the left of the of the cans of this coke cans and uh, this is a blue light that's adding a lot of like visual interest to the whole composition and then i have another light right here this this is very similar to the three-point light setup. Make sure to watch the video if you haven't. This is very similar to the three-point light setup so that we can get a very nice, interesting look over here. I'm actually going to split this into a vertical split so we can have both views. And on this view, I'm going to go into the camera. This is the actual like render of the camera. And over here, we're going to have our just like the material preview. There we go. So the first thing I want to talk about is about a focal length and a depth of field. So one of the things that we need to understand about the 3D world is that we are trying to mimic or to imitate what's possible on the real world. So the more we understand about how the real world works, the easier it's going to be to uh, do it on the 3D world. So if we go very quickly to Google, you're going to see that there are two very important concepts about cameras that we need to understand. The first one is called focal length. So focal length is the distance that we have from the lens to the focal point of our element. As you can see, this one right here. And this focal length from the lens to the sensor to where the image is projected is very important because depending on what kind of focal length we have, we're going to be getting a slightly different result. The lower the focal length, the more you're going to be able to see, but the shallower it will be. So, so you're going to be able to see more stuff, but everything's going to be just like a, like a blur, like an environment. If we start going closer and closer and closer, we're going to get a narrower like field of view, but we're also going to be able to focus really, really precise elements. I love this example right here of this little like red barn on the mountains because you can see with a low focal length we can see the whole mountain range we can see the little cabin at the back we can see the fence on the front but we cannot see specific details about the elements if we really want to focus on the red barn we need to start increasing our focal length until we get something really really intense so the general rule of thumb is if you want to go for really big shots you're going to go or you're going to start using lower focal lengths if you want to go for very specific parts of your composition you're going to be using like telephoto lenses or telephoto the, um, like a focal length so you can get very very close to this specific point for character for instance here's a pro tip for characters i recommend 55 to 85 millimeters that's a good range so that you don't get a lot of distortion on the face now for this particular one right here if we go to our camera you can see here on the camera properties where we're, we're using right now a 50 millimeter focal length i think i want to go a little bit more exaggerated so i'm going to go all the way down to 24 and as you can see, look at this. The 24 focal length is going to distort everything quite a bit. I think 24 is a little bit too much. Let's go to 35. 35, by the way, is the default inside of Maya, for instance. And as you can see, we're going to get this very, very cool effect. I'm going to scale this on the y-axis just to make sure that we don't see any like corner. And there we go. So as you can see, we get a more exaggerated view of our cans. We get like more more distortion in this sort of like a uh, fish eye way. And uh, it allows us to have a more dynamic composition. Now, this, of course, is something that you're going to be changing depending on the, on the project, on the client, on all of these things. I'm, for instance, going to be moving this can right here. So that's the first thing, focal length. Focal length, again, will give us an interesting play in, rela in relationship to how much of the objects we're seeing. The next one that's really important is called aperture. So aperture is how much light we're letting into the lenses of our camera. Right now, I am using a DSLR for the recording. That's why we get a very nice image with very nice light. But usually, even phones have the option nowadays to change slightly the aperture of their lenses. So the lower the aperture, this is a, it's a little bit counterintuitive. I remember when I was learning this, it was always a little bit confusing. But the lower the aperture size, 
that means the more light we're getting or letting into the lens. And the lower the f-stop, which is this thing right here, which is, again, the aperture size of the lens, the blurrier the image will become because we're letting more light in and just like, kind of like defocuses everything. The sharper we go, the, the smaller we go, the tinier the, the focal length, which is a, a, a bigger number on the, on, on the f-stop, the sharper the image will be. So this is a perfect example right here. You can see a f stop of 22 where the, the all of the aperture is really, really closed and we see a very strong focus. Everything becomes uh, focused. And if we go larger, if we start opening this aperture size, we're letting more light into the element and that's gonna allow us to get this very nice blur. In games, some people don't like um, like depth of field. I personally do like it. I feel like it makes things look a little bit more cinematography or cinematic or I don't know. Uh, but there are people that don't like to have as much depth of field. However, in renders, I do consider it to be super, super cool. So now that we know this, the big question is, well, how do we add the depth of field here? Well, it's actually very easy. You just go to the camera. You go to the little camera over here and you just activate depth of field. And that's it. That's all you need to do, and depth of field is now active. As you can see right now, I have a very, very low f-stop, which is 0.1. 0.1 is actually, I don't think it's even like physically possible to get this in the real world. So let's go for something a little bit more realistic, like 2.4. So with a 2.4 depth of field, you're going to see right here that we're getting a little bit of blur here on the forward uh, like can, and uh, we're not getting as much like blur on the back part. Why? Because right now the focus distance is set to 10 meters. So 10 meters from where the camera is to that specific point, that's the point that's going to be the most in focus. And as you go either closer to the camera or farther away from the camera, things are going to be more blurred. The one cool thing that you can do here is we have this little eyedropper and we can select objects and we can change the depth of field. So now the object that we select is the new focal point of our element. So for instance, if I bring the f-stop, let's say something like 0.5, which is going to be really low, you can see that this scan right here, which is the one that I selected, is going to be very in focus and everything else is going to be quite out of focus. 0.5 might be a little bit too much. Let's try a 1. And there we go. So this looks a little bit more realistic. Now, here's a very cool trick. I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to create a new plane axis. And I'm going to rename this plane axis to Focal Depth Focus. Okay? So with this focal depth focus, what I can do now is I can go to the camera and select the focal depth focus as my point. And if I grab the focal depth uh, focus, that, that uh, axis plane, I can move it around. And as you can see, I can change the depth of field. We can start really close to the camera, for instance, right there. And then we can move this and move it all the way to the back to, let's say, this can right here. So now if we were to animate this, we can generate a very cool effect where the intensity or the, the value of the focal depth is changing throughout the, the whole composition. Or we can just also just leave it like close to the can that we want, which in this case is this like forward facing uh, can right here and everything else is going to be out of focus. So yeah, that's pretty much it, my friends. That's one of the great things that you can do here instead of Blender to generate a very, very nice composition. Finally, we can just go to our render over here. I'm going to set this to 30 seconds. And if we say render and we render the image, we're going to get a very, very nice uh, render effect. Look at that with the depth of field here on the front, on the back, and this uh, Coca-Cola can really, really in focus. If, I think the, the element's not precisely where I want it to be. So let me go to number seven, grab this one right here, and I'm going to push it a little bit forward. There we go, right around there. And now if we render, we should have the, ex we should have the exact, like, uh, sort of uh, effect that we want. Cancel that. And let's render again. There we go. Now, again, the, the point 0.1 or the 1 focal depth is way, way too much. You can see that this is way too distorted. So I'm going to, again, cancel this and just go back to my camera. And instead of a focal depth or, sorry, a f-stop of 0.5, let's do 1.5. So that way we should have a little bit of depth of field, but it's not going to be too much. And it should look quite, quite nice. Let's try this again. And there we go. So that's it, guys. If you like this and um, you want to support the channel, make sure to subscribe, make sure to like. Again, if you want to know about the upcoming premium course that's going to be releasing very, very, very soon, make sure to go down here into our links and uh, join the Discord channel. That's probably the first place we're going to be announcing the course. So yeah, that's it, my friends. Thank you very much for the support, and I'll see you back on the next video. Bye-bye.